In Cornwall, we've been fairly fortunate in the first three heat waves of the summer because the heat waves have been followed by a decent day's rain. However, here we are now in late August and the fourth heat wave is hitting us in the garden very hard. Everybody loves a gardening disaster, but there are a few tips and a few things that you can do to make things better. I'm standing beside a clump of hydrangeas. You can very clearly see uh, that the flowers are wilting, the leaves have, have dropped down, uh, the plants are looking scorched and dry, some of the leaves are going yellow, and generally speaking, uh, this hydrangea clump is not looking very good, and indeed, many other hydrangea clumps are not looking very good. However, however, we've seen this before. This drought is not as bad as 1976. It's certainly not as dry here as it was in 2022, or briefly in 2023. And we know that if we get some rain, which we're going to do tomorrow, these hydrangeas will pick up again. They may need cutting down to reshoot. Um, you can see how small the flowers are and how sparse parched the plants are, but they will recover. This is not a total disaster. So here is another victim of uh, the recent drought. This is Hydrangea paniculata vanille phrase, which we looked at about a month ago when it was in full flower and looking really well. Today it's looking shriveled. It's clearly half dead. Um, but again, we know that the forthcoming rain next week will probably perk it up. And during the course of the winter, we can probably cut it down to about a third of its size and allow it to rejuvenate itself. So all is not lost here, even though today in full sun at 21 degrees, it doesn't look very phrase <laughs> and it doesn't look very well at all. But there we go. Rhododendrons, however, are a far bigger problem and they're a very surface rooting uh, genus. The roots are very close to the surface of the ground and therefore when it dries up, they shrivel and die exactly as this plant here has done. You can see that the plant knew that it was going to die because even though it's dying, it produced a copious mass of seeds uh, which will still be fertile even though the plant itself is now very clearly dead. Uh, this plant was about 20 years old and it survived previous droughts, but not this one. Nothing we can do at all. All over the gardens there are dead rhododendrons. This one was only planted this spring and I'm afraid we haven't uh, found time or the energy to water it. If it rained tomorrow, as it will, a few bits might pick up, but this is probably dead. If we look to a much more established rhododendron, you see that there's one branch which is still green. The others are showing autumn colour and the leaves have gone purple. Uh, and those branches will almost certainly die. Um, it's not a rhododendron which has a huge lifespan but certainly the drought has very much speeded up its partial demise. And it's too late to do anything about this rhododendron, which has clearly shriveled up a week or two ago. Why is it that the two plants next to it are, are fine? Possibly because it just catches a bit more sun and the difference uh, that that makes to the moisture in the ground is significant enough for one to survive and the other one not to. Looking here at some of our young scented rhododendrons, this one has failed to make it and yet beside it others have uh, done well. This is why really when you plant rhododendrons in groups you should expect a, out of a group of four or five that one or two will probably keel over and die. Um, and maybe not just only from drought, but from other 
rhododendron issues, uh, but certainly drought is the worst. So here is another example of a drought casualty in a group of rhododendron moonstone. Uh, the plant probably which is in the hottest position nearest the pathway has succumbed um, whereas the others look reasonably fit and well and we took cuttings off them uh, only a few weeks ago uh, I think if you took the cuttings today they would now be too hard to strike properly but for this one I'm afraid it's curtains so here is a group of rhododendron fragrantissimum and we may just be in time to save them with some water. You can see that the plant on the end, which is probably the hottest, is looking the most shriveled up. The others are looking pretty much on the way to shriveling up with the new growth, looking rather poor and the lower leaves all drooping down. When you look at the next uh, batch of rhododendrons further on there, they're still holding up, possibly because they've just got a bit more shade. But we're in time to do something and we're going to give them a good soaking. And here these plants are planted on a slope, so we've got to be sure that the water gets into the roots and not pour too much water, which is just going to run downhill. You may say, well, actually we're in a hosepipe ban, and indeed Cornwall's in a hosepipe ban, but there is a dispensation for gardens which have plant heritage collections of plants to use water even when there's a hosepipe ban. We have two national collections of magnolia and podocarpus, so we're entitled to use water and in any event our water comes from a private supply um, so, which nobody else uses and it's only for use in the garden. And so let's let's try and resuscitate these. These few plants. We may be too late, but we might be just in time. see how the water is just running off the surface and we got, need to try and get it directly onto the roots. Whether that will save them only time will tell. In a garden this size you can only really try and water the plants that you've planted in the spring or perhaps last autumn and you can also water the nursery beds where you're growing on plants to plant out. But please don't think this uh, drought is nearly as bad as 1976 or indeed 1922. In the real droughts, the big leaf rhododendrons such as Sinograndi and Maccabianum, they uh, failed to put on any new growth, shed their old leaves and died. And all over Cornwall we found that we had no large Maccabianum, Sinograndis or any of the other big leaf species. But this year one has to say that this young plant is looking extraordinarily well. It put on the best part of 15 inches of new growth and it's looking really good and another one just in behind us there is looking equally well. And why is that you may ask, why is that? Um, the sort of curling on the leaves that you get in a drought conditions only, only just visible on one or two leaves and the answer is really two things. Firstly, shade. Um, in a woodland garden, in a dry conditions, everything revolves around how much shade you can get. Obviously this tree is growing in the open, but it only actually gets direct sunlight for quite a, uh, a short period of the day. 
and therefore it's been able to keep its roots moist and it's been able to survive and grow on perfectly well. And the second key reason why your rhododendrons will, can survive is dew. Just look at the amount of dew uh, that even at 11 in the morning is still remaining on the leaves. And that dew, um, which can come from sea mists or sea frets or drizzle or just overnight, as we get through the hottest periods, dew levels are increasing. And that dew is falling on the leaves and providing some sustenance to the leaves. And as we get into September, even if it doesn't rain terribly hard, the dew will make a tremendous difference to the survival of your rhododendrons. So there are things you can do other than simply watering. Uh, a lot of it is, is down to luck. If you plant a rhododendron very close to a big tree that's soaking up lots of water, don't expect the tree, the uh, rhododendron to survive very long because it's competing for water. But where you've got trees and shrubs growing together, shading each other, providing a decent little microclimate, and where the dew can stay on the leaves uh, long into the day, actually your plants have got a chance and we don't need to be all doom and gloom about rhododendrons and whether or not we'll be able to grow rhododendrons in 50 years time in Cornwall. I think that's a question for the future, but I also think that with a bit of care and attention, we can certainly uh, continue to grow rhododendrons if we think about a bit more where we plant them. And just, just look over here finally at rhododendron Yakisimanum. This is a plant which you would normally grow in absolutely full sun and our plants that were in full sun have not put on any new growth and have completely shriveled up but here in a shaded position we've got amazing new growth look at the wonderful indumentum on, on the top of the leaves look at the wonderful indumentum underneath the leaves we've got a thriving plant which we've grown in shade. But the secret to this shade is that actually these trees above it are deciduous. So throughout the winter, it is getting exposed to full sun. And when it matters, it's getting the shade that it needs. Rhododendron yakisimanum is something that grows on bare mountain sides in the sun, but we've now got to learn to grow them in a different place. Look at all the flower buds coming for next year. Don't despair, we've had quite enough doom and gloom and it's going to rain later this week.